Winter means snow for some and sun for others. Today on At Your Leisure, we have them both. I'm Chad. Join Rhea and me as we find a frosted 4x4 destination that may be more difficult to conquer than the Red Rocks of Moab. Even tougher than that will be our attempts to cook lunch. Oh, burn pizza, anyone? Then, travel reporter Stephen Human finds a warmer climb and shows how even in December, you can hit the water. Get ready to own the outdoors because AYL is taking you on an adventure right now. This is the same vehicle we have to we have to drive home in this vehicle. So do not. All right. Well, right. you know what? I think we're just going to stop right here and go pick our line and uh, say hello. Are the brakes? Are the brakes? Do you have the emergency brake on? There you go. All hello. right. I've gotten all I've gotten all my instructions. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to At Your Leisure <laughs> <laughs> today. It's beautiful out here. I'm Chad Booth. <laughs> I'm Maria Rossi Booth, and we are in a winter playground out here in Little Moab. This is beautiful. Yeah, this is a rock formation that is kind of a quasi-slick rock like you would find down in Moab, except that it's, it's white. And it's found just south of the Greater Salt Lake area on the west side of Utah Lake, kind of at the south end. You look for mile marker seven on the uh, west highway. You make your way out to see a rock formation that looks like Pride Rock to your left. Yeah. Make a right hand turn there and you can come up here. It's a little daunting, I'm telling you. It, it was very surprising because it's just kind of hilly and then all of a sudden you come upon these huge mats of rocks that you can get over. And we're with our friend Chuck. Chuck, hey, wave, hey. Hey, Chuck. Chuck you know, is here from the Utah Four Wheel Drive Association and he's uh, going to escort us today as we go out jeeping. And you know what? He said that he has a friend with Moab Outfitters and he, he's always jeeping in Moab and he said when he comes down here he breaks his truck every single time <laughs> because it really is there's some serious well, rocks. To you it. had a friend who we invited to come out Ray Sherman and he said well I'm not going because I'm going to mess up my yeah, Rubicon. He had heard all about it. Yeah so <laughs> anyway we are going to have a lot of fun today we, we're going to do some cooking. Chuck I hope you like pizza. Hey oh, yeah. Chuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what Sicilian doesn't like people? There you go. <laughs> there you go. We're going right. to get on to that, get out on the trail. We're going to work our way down here, and uh, right now it's time to go to our travel adventure. Steve Human is actually playing with snow, but it's in a different form. It has reverted to its summertime format. Yes, you can find it this time of year, but you have to drive a little to do it. Steve, where are you? Thanks so much, Stephen, for that great California adventure. And if you want to know more about it, just go to our website at AYLTV.com. Well, right now, Chuck and I are standing here watching uh, that guy, Chad, hopefully successfully get over the rock. And there he goes. So, Chuck, tell me, why is this place so exciting? I mean, why do so many people with four-wheel drives come out here? Does it push them to the limit? or? Uh, yeah, a lot of it does. Without going to Moab, this is the next best thing to Moab. It's even more rugged because at Moab you have some spots that are real rocky, slick rock, but yeah. then you come out into spots that are, you know, pretty easy to cross. But out here you got total obstacles. Going over these these obstacles is very challenging, and a lot of people get a rush out of out of doing it. And some people, when they break their rigs, they don't mind. <laughs> well, this is really exciting, and the fun thing is, it's literally all year round. Oh yeah. You can do this no matter what time of year. Obviously, there's snow on the ground, and we're out here having fun. Oh yeah, it's a lot more treacherous when the slick rock gets wet. Yeah. Yeah, but I bet. You did it. I didn't leave any parts on the ground either. That's <laughs> no. a real switch. You did awesome. I'm so happy we have a ride home now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'd pile you guys up in my jeep. All right, well, don't go away. We're going to head off to a commercial, and when we come back, it's product review with Darren Kinder. Chuck, nice looking rig. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We are out here at Little Moab, and you know, Chuck and I got talking about the fact that, that and, and I like the way you said it. You, you don't buy a Jeep, you build a Jeep. And, and a lot of people think, oh, they, they, they see a lifted rig like this with a winch on it and likes, and they go, yeah, that must cost thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. What did it really take for you to get into a Jeep like this? I bought the Jeep stock mm -hmm. 
And with everything I got in it, I probably got about oh, $6,000 into it. A lot of times you buy a Jeep from a dealer that's already lifted and everything else, and you really don't know what you're getting into. What does $6,000 buy you? What, what, what is your upgrade? With a buddy of mine, he owns Moab Outfitters in Linden. His name's Russ Bartholomew. Oh, yeah, it's the guy who wouldn't show up out here. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we put a, a three and a half inch Rubicon Express lift on it. My tires were about uh, $1,300 just for the tires. That's the gift that keeps on giving, right? Oh, yeah. You'll have to keep buying those. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got a trail gear, 8,000 pound winch, rigid lights, they're LED. With the disconnect? Yeah. Yeah, I got the disconnect from Terraflex too. So Chuck, for people that are just uh, like getting started in this, explain what a, a disconnect is, because they may not understand. Okay, the disconnect, it disconnects your sway bar so your, your vehicle has more articulation on the rocks. And uh, you got your jack mount. That's, that's actually a pretty slick jack mount. Why do you need a high lift jack? Well, the thing is, when you get a flat, a regular jack won't work on these. The word Jeep stands for just empty every pocket. <laughs> That's good advice, Chuck. In oh, fact, yeah. we've learned that with ours. Well, right now, it's time for us to go to our trailhead adventure. Reese Stein, a crazy man in his own right, has found a very interesting story for us today. Reese, what's up? You know what? A big thanks to Rocky Mountain ATV. They always come through at helping us get these stories put together. What a great place to go to get your accessories for your bikes and your motorcycles, street bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs. Oh, so do we have everything we need? Well, yeah, I've got the oven set here for the brownies. Okay. Brownies! Always need brownies when you're four-wheel drive out in Little Moab. <laughs> and pizza sauce. No, I couldn't make it for the scratch. brownies? No. Yeah, I'm going to put it on top of the brownies. <laughs> no, we got this wonderful Camp Chef pizza oven, and I have never used it. We're out here in the middle of nowhere, literally. But look, we have these two little pizzas right here that Rhea has so artistically made, square as they may be. Ah, you hit the mozzarella back on here. Oh, this is not going to... You know, you're doing stuff in the outdoors like this. You are going to be taking chances on things, so... Okay, I just left my deluxe kitchen, that red Jeep back there. <laughs> and now I'm gonna put these beautiful brownies in the oven. And doesn't that just look delicious? It <laughs> is alive! <laughs> alive, I say! That's evil, <laughs> right there, right from you know Time Bandits. how much money I spent on these ingredients? I'm eating the top off of it. What do you say, Chuck? Eat the top off of it? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, what, it's, what did you do wrong? Hey, if you were stranded, you would eat this. Because we're stranded. Our Jeep just broke. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back with more of that. Your leisure. Well, it looks like it's going to be a great show next week. And as a last note, if you want to come out here to Little Moab and have the same kind of fun that we've had all day. All day long. Yes. First off, hire a gremlin <laughs> so that he can sabotage your car. Okay. Get a completely out of control oven. A chef who has to work in the back of your vehicle. And you know what? Yeah. I forgot the knife. Yeah, and the brownies did turn out. They did. <laughs> anyway, come out here. Here's how you do it. If you're coming from the south, you go to Santa Quin, you go west towards Eureka, and you get to the west uh, Utah Lake Highway, head north to mile marker seven. If you're coming from the north, go out Redwood Road from Salt Lake City, head south. It'll turn right into this highway, the West Lake highway and when you get to mile marker seven turn west go out till you see a formation that looks like pride rock and at that point go to the north and if you don't get here exactly to this rock formation all the roads will end up coming over here anyway and you'll probably see a fellow jeep out here too because they're all over the place out are you, here are you kidding you might see us we might still be here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. It's going to be a really cold Christmas. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> we'll send for we'll send for some uh, rescue. Right. Anyway, seriously, you don't have a knife? No, I swear I forgot the knife. I'm uh, sorry. Well, we'll just sit here and dine on brownies till you come to our rescue. Between now and then, make sure you get out with your family and friends. Enjoy the great outdoors at That's your, your leisure. leisure. Okay. Can I go like this? Yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Chuck. 